Everybody hates Jar Jar Binks, including characters within Star Wars itself. Jar Jar was banished from his own tribe, for God's sake. And I can even cite our own selection process for this very bracket as evidence of the universal hatred of Jar Jar Binks. In the wedding, when the wind blows the hat off and, and, and Mutt's about to put it on, and we're all like, no, don't you do it. Don't you put that hat on. Hey everybody, welcome back to Movie Wars here on Cinefix. We are in some semi-final round action of Worst Wars, the battle to the bottom. Today we have T representing Jar Jar Banks and Clint with your wild card, ladies and gentlemen, Mutt Williams from Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. As a reminder, format is two minutes opening arguments, one minute rebuttal, and then some free form back and forth and or yelling until we all get tired of it and go back and do our real jobs. So uh, I consulted with the coin. It was an honor to finally meet the coin, but Clint, you're right. Total diva. Total diva. Total diva. Almost and, unmanageable these yeah, days. Yeah, really. I had to send three fruit baskets mm -hmm. before the coin would tell me that tea is going first. So, T, opening arguments, two minutes, and go. All right, so the matchup between Jar Jar and Mutt Williams is perhaps the most interesting matchup in Worst Wars thus far. And I say that because there have been charges that each of our characters ruined the franchise in which he appears. But I don't want to dwell on that too much because the Star Wars prequels and Indiana Jones 4 are all bad movies no matter how you slice them. Instead, I want to mention how the very process of doing my research for today's debate was illuminating. See, I hadn't even seen Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull before this. I heard it was a runny dump, and I decided that for me personally, the series would end with Last Crusade, as it should have. So when I heard Mutt Williams was the wild card, I didn't even know who that was. Now, unlike when they nuked the fridge, Mutt Williams has not transcended the dog shit movie that he is in. He doesn't have an identity that is equal to or even larger than the piece of shit that is Indiana Jones 4. Jar Jar Binks, on the other hand, is known to nearly everyone, including people who haven't even seen Star Wars. Exhibit A. I'm gonna turn that around. Mike Cruz. We've, we've covered rather extensively how our colleague has never seen Star Wars, and despite not having seen the films, even Cruz wanted to pick Jar Jar for this, for this bracket, if he'd had the chance. Uh, and he's not an isolated example. He's representative of Jar Jar Binks' placement in entertainment as the rubric against which other terrible movie characters must be measured. If you've heard of Star Wars, you've heard of Jar Jar being the worst thing about it. And Jar Jar Binks he isn't even famous. He's Hitler famous, which is the worst kind of famous. And it's only fitting because Jar Jar is the worst. There are plenty of things wrong with, it, with Indiana Jones 4, and there's no way that Mutt is the worst of them all. If you hate Muff, it's probably because you hate Shia LaBeouf, and you wouldn't be wrong for hating, him, for hating him because he's arguably the epitome of douchebaggery. If you know what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying. But Mutt is not the worst character in his own movie, and therefore he's not the worst character in all movies. Clint, what have you got to say to that? Two minutes starting now. So yes, I will agree that Mutt and Jar Jar are almost exactly the same character, sort of, in that how they're hated and how they ruin franchises and they get a lot of hate for that, especially from the diehard fans. Now, I, I do want to talk about how they ruin the franchises, right? Now, there's not a lot else I can say about Mutt Williams that I didn't say in the opening round. So to sum that back up, he's terrible, not so much for what he does on screen as a character in the film, but he represents, in a much larger sense, a, a lot of really bad things. So Mutt represents the passing of torches from formerly great heroes to a new and much less capable generation. Uh, I would argue he even represents the recent trend of studios manufacturing franchises in an attempt to squeeze every dollar they can out of known commodities. But most importantly, Mutt represents the downfall, the very end of Indiana Jones. And that is why Jar Jar and Mutt are only almost exactly the same. Why Mutt is actually much worse than Jar Jar. You see, as I argued in the first round, Mutt's sole purpose in Crystal Skull was to make Indiana Jones seem older, to just point it out repeatedly. Now the result of all that Mutt in Crystal Skull was proving unequivocally that there is no Indiana Jones without Indiana Jones. Mutt had an opportunity to be a capable torchbearer for the franchise. God knows everybody that made the film, Spielberg included, was really rooting for him to take the reins. Mutt was such a bad attempt at shoehorning in a replacement that he single-handedly proved that when Harrison Ford can no longer handle the whip and the fedora, we're done with Indiana Jones. There's no more of it. Jar Jar, on the, on the other hand, while he was inarguably a terrible character, proved that Star Wars, unlike Indiana Jones, 
is a robust enough cinematic universe that it can survive in spite of him. He showed up in The Phantom Menace, we all got mad, he showed up less in the other two prequels, we were still mad, but now we're getting more Star Wars, right? In the same timeline, a continuation of the Ten same seconds. story, you think we're ever going to get more Indiana Jones after Mutt shows up? Mutt slammed the brakes on three excellent Indiana Jones movies, and Jar Jar just did not. Time. T, you have one minute to rebut all of that, starting right now. Now, I do remember you mentioning that Mutt uh, is an asshole for constantly pointing out how old Indy is uh, in the first round in here, but I would say that if, within his own movie, Mac is the bigger asshole. He, he quadruple crosses Indy, and he keeps calling him Jonesy. Like, this guy's just a prick, all right? And he's worse than the actual villain of the movie, movie and definitely worse than Mutt. Marion sucks just as much or more than her son, and she's got less screen time, which actually makes it kind of impressive that she manages to transcend his suck. Any attitude problem that you say that Mutt has is pretty forgivable if you actually look at the situation he's in. His mother's life is in danger when he meets Dr. Jones, and considering what a high-stress predicament that is, the fact that the worst thing we get from him are a few lame geezer jokes is actually pretty impressive. He still manages to be heroic and helpful consistently. As far as him torpedoing us ever getting an another good Indiana Jones movie, if you get a good writer, of course you can. They should have gotten J.J. on that instead of the Star Wars. As far as Mac being a worse character than Shia, like, yeah, the guy was an asshole, but being an asshole in a movie does not mean he's a bad character. He was effective at being an asshole in the movie, so that, I don't really worry about that. But even if Jar Jar is a worse character on paper than Mutt Williams is, it, he, did, he did far less relative damage than Mutt Williams did. So let's think about it this way. Mutt is like a bird taking a big shit on the window of a car, of a really nice car. Even if Jar Jar is two birds taking two big shits, those are that are landing on the windows of like Star Destroyers going at light speed. They didn't even notice, they kept going. In other words, Jar Jar was an undeniable pile of shit, but ultimately Star Wars as a franchise is just fine. Mutt, also a pile of shit. Indiana Jones, no longer fine. All right, so just to go back to your bird shit analogy, I would say that conceding that Mutt Williams is one bird shit and Jar Jar is two bird shit, just despite what they're shitting on makes Jar Jar worse. Like, I don't really care if the thing is bigger that the birds are shitting on. And I disagree that the Indiana Jones franchise is somehow unsalvageable because of Mutt Williams. I'd say it's more unsalvageable because Har Harrison Ford is really old now. But here's, here's the thing that, that Mutt proved. Mutt was there specifically to pass the torch. Mm -hmm. Like, the scene at the end, he almost put the hat on, he almost became Indiana Jones at the very end of that movie. Like, that he was his... He almost put a hat on. I mean, it's symbolic, but yeah, it's not that's, like... that's literally all it is. You're right, it's symbolic. <laughs> but it's symbolic of him be continuing that franchise, right? Like, had Mutt been a success, had that movie been a success, we would have had three or four Mutt Williams adventures. But that movie but, wasn't but what, a failure because of Mutt. No, well, it was a failure for plenty of reasons. Yeah. But Jar Jar, as bad as he is, like, he, he was a, he's a blip on the radar. He's something that we're all mad at, and we're, we got over it. It's behind us. We can still be mad at it. Isn't that funny? We still have more Star Wars in the same universe. The only way we'll get any more Indiana Jones is if, uh, you know, Pratt is Indiana Jones, and we go back to the 30s or 40s or something like that. Indiana Jones, that timeline of Indiana Jones... Ruined, rendered moot by <laughs> Mutt Williams. I disagree. I think it's easy to say that it's ruined forever because there isn't actually something in development that would pick up where that left off, but they could easily recast and just bring in a new writer and production team to rejuice that franchise. They do it all the time. They're doing it with Star Wars. I think it's easy to say that Jar Jar didn't ruin Star Wars because there are new movies of, of Star Wars coming out relatively soon that are largely going to ignore that. You know, they're going to ignore Jar Jar because he has so much eclipsed the movie's ability to be remembered for the initial they, three movies. But they are and they aren't. They, they can... I, I guess you can call it ignoring Jar Jar, but they will be, Jar Jar won't be featured in the new movies because Star Wars is such an expansive place. It's such a huge, like, sandbox to play in that However, they don't have to deal with I Jar have Jar. read that J.J. himself said that they have basically said that Jar Jar died in the interim of these movies, well, it, which it, I think is Jar like Jar a reward to the Jar Jar would be like 100-something like years old, I guess. Well, who, knows, <laughs> who knows how long a Gungan lives? That's fair. That's true. But, but, but the look, point it, is, I think, like, the fact that they need to even say that shows how much he's hated and that he has tainted the entire, you know, mythology. But look, uh, I mean... The disrespect that George Lucas showed the fan base of Star Wars started long before Jar Jar. Just in The Phantom Menace, the whole midichlorian thing took a big 
on the force in general. The, I mean, you could argue it started with the Ewoks, right? Like, a lot of people were mad at the Return but of the again, Jedi this for is... being the Ewoks in a kid's movie, which is the same thing that Jar Jar was, right? Right. And Jar Jar, like... I would argue that he serves a purpose in the story, like thematically, because he's... Yeah, he's, he's a, the reason the Sith is able to take no, over. No, 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 not, not that, not <laughs> like logistically. I'm talking like Jar Jar is, he's, he's a fool. He's a, he's a clown. Like that's a, that's a trope that goes all the way back to Shakespeare. It goes all the way back to ancient like Greek and Roman storytelling, actually. But explaining actually. his role doesn't make him not suck. No, he sucks at it, but he has a purpose. Mutt had no purpose. Of course he did. Had, he, he saved he Indy's was, life twice, and he's the one who's actually able to recover the skull from the Russians when they're in that uh, jungle jeep chase. Yeah, but my, we get nothing of importance at all out of Mutt Williams, all right? But you can read something into Jar Jar. Like, it, like Jar Jar being the fool, his own people hate him, the, the Jedi hate him, everybody's annoyed at him. But the lesson with Jar Jar is that all it takes is one person to look past somebody's annoyance to see that they're useful. And when Queen Amidala enlists Jar Jar's help to help bring the Gungans and the Naboo together to fight the droid army, to fight the, uh, the Trade Federation, like, that's, that's a good lesson. That's a moral. It's important for kids to I'm do it. I'm not talking that's... about lessons. I'm talking about an annoying no, but you're talk character. Yeah, but, you're... <laughs> but, I'm ta but this is exactly my point. You can't see through the annoying to see that he actually serves a function. As does Mutt. No, he, he serves a function like logistically, getting from point A to, to B to C. I, I really but think he serves that no any... purpose. In, he doesn't provide any, any lesson, any morality. He doesn't provide anything of to the story. Of course he does. No, he doesn't. He's Not a, he's only a does weird... he literally like save people's asses more than once, including Indy. Uh, as far as like moral lessons, there's that moment when they're in the tombs and Indy's about to steal the dagger from the mummy, and Mutt gives him a look. He's just like, "I was gonna put it back." So in that sense, like uh, that might be a fleeting moment, but if you want to talk about whether he's a moral compass or not, there you go. It's super fleeting. Super <laughs> fleeting. That doesn't count. It does. He, this is this is from the, the same kid that was the, stealing a beer in the diner like 20 minutes prior to this. Role reversal. Uh huh. Okay. <laughs> now the student has become the teacher. You in, see? Indeed. Classic movie stuff. <laughs> That's it for today's uh, semi-final round action of Movie Wars. Down in the comments below, there is a comment from Cinefix saying thumbs up if Jar Jar Binks is the worst. Another saying thumbs up if Mutt Williams is the worst. Also, uh, right here on Cinefix, we've got the other semi-final round. We have Dave representing Bella Swan going up against Casey with Mr. Yunioshi from Breakfast at Tiffany's. Should be a very interesting matchup, so make sure to click over and check that out. Uh, vote, like, and subscribe, and come back for some more movie fun right here on Cinefix. I feel like a dun-dun-dun. Dun-dun-dun! Thank you, that's better. <laughs>